Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing the top 12 anticipated manga releases for the month of June. Let's get started. And I do want to mention real quick that dates are always subject to change, so be on the lookout. First one that we're going to talk about here is saving 80,000 gold in another world for my retirement volume one. This is being put out by Kodansha. It's a comedy fantasy slice of life series created by Funa with art by Keisuke Motoe. After growing up an orphan, Mitsuha has a healthy respect for money and a desire to live well, at least until she dies after being pushed off a cliff. Waking up in a strange fantasy world, Mitsuha narrowly survives an encounter with a pack of wolves, then realizes that she has the power to move between this world and the real one. A lesser person might embark on heroic adventures. Mitsuha instead immediately recognizes the lucrative possibilities of her new situation and heads out to buy an arsenal of modern weapons. Her goal? To acquire 80,000 gold and live in the life of leisure she's always dreamt of. Part of what I like about this manga is a slight little spoiler, but eventually in the story she is able to bring items from our world into this fantasy one and she starts selling that stuff to fund her goal and, and make money on all that. So to see the reaction from nobles and common folk when they see everyday items that we would use is really funny and more than made up for it in my opinion. So yeah, don't go in this thinking, oh it's another isekai, maybe give it a shot and you'll be pleasantly surprised. Also, it helps that Mitsuha, I thought, was a really tenacious, fun character to root for. Next one on the list is the first of many Omnibus editions that are coming out, Prophecy, the Omnibus Edition. This is being put out by Vertical slash Kodansha, and it's a drama mystery written and drawn by Tetsuya Sutsui. This Omnibus Edition contains all three volumes in one, and it is about a newspaper masked vigilante who broadcasts his acts of vengeance before committing them. A newly formed police division tackling the new frontier of internet-based crime, as the sun rises on the era of information, can a group of people who found themselves at the bottom of the food chain rattle society through the web and avenge a fallen friend? If you're looking for series that tackle gritty vigilantism and stuff like that, I think I'll be right at home with this. I do like the art a lot. The premise sounded interesting enough that I think I can safely recommend it for all you drama mystery nerds out there. Another omnibus, we got Qualia the Purple, I hope I said that right. This is being put out by Seven Seas, a drama, mystery, science fiction series, and this manga collects three volumes in one, featuring story by Hisamitsu Ueo. Through Yukari's uncanny purple eyes, all people look just like robots. Her talent is both a blessing and a curse. She's an asset to the police, with her skill allowing her to evaluate humans at a glance, but her strange sight has caused her the friendship of her peers. Luckily, she does have one friend in her corner, Hato Gaku Manabu, a girl at school who cares deeply for Yukari. But when Yukari is recruited to join a secret organization, the real trouble begins. Gaku is thrust into a realm of mystery, quantum experimentation, and alternate universes, with only her wits and her love for Yukari to guide her along the way. So this fantasy shonen series is an all-in-one, like I mentioned earlier, you don't need to get anything else. So I think this is an interesting sci-fi story with a twist. I love the art on this and the unexpected twist here with robotics, alternate universes, and other sci-fi shenanigans. What is not to love? Another omnibus edition, Apare Ranman. This is being put out by Yen Press. It's an action comedy and kind of sports manga at the same time, written and drawn by Anton Siku. I probably butchered that. I do apologize to the creator. It is the 19th century and we follow eccentric mechanic Apare Sorano, who sets off on an adventure with his samurai friend Kosame Ishiki, only to be cast adrift on the Pacific Ocean. A passing steamship rescues them and delivers the two not back to familiar Japan, but to America. Trapped in Los Angeles with no easy way to return home, the pair decide to enter the world's first trans-American automobile race. However, with vast sums hinging on the dangerous event's outcome, they may find the odds are stacked against them. Apare Ranman was 
is an anime first from Progressive Animation Works, and it was actually one of my favorite shows from 2020, and I am so happy that the manga adaptation is available for everybody. I loved this series and story so much. Apare Sorano is a wonderful character that kind of reminded me of Senku from Dr. Stone. He's super smart and has the best of intentions. Of course, his supporting cast is also great. And actually, the whole participants of the race, they're all eccentric and wonderful, uh, such a diverse cast of characters that you really come to love and hate depending on the side of good and evil. So think something like Dr. Stone, only not as apocalyptic, meets wacky races from Hanna-Barbera, and you got yourself a really hell of a good time. I love this series, great characters, fantastic action when it comes to the racing. You don't even have to like the sport to enjoy this. Highly recommend it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Though I prefer the original source material, I do think this manga is a fantastic adaptation of that anime. What He Who Doesn't Believe in Fate says, Volume 1. This drama romance shoujo title, published by Seven Seas, is written by Omu the Rice. Kosuke can see the red string of fate that connects soulmates. Unfortunately, he's fallen in love with Yuka and her string clearly doesn't lead to him. He hides his feelings for her, until one day a fortune teller lets Yuka know her destined lover is nearby, and she thinks it's Kosuke. Could this finally be the windfall for Kosuke's unrequited love. Can he stop destiny? I really enjoy the art on this one and the fact that they're able to blend sci-fi elements with supernatural stuff and of course romance. Highly recommended. Looking forward to checking this one out. The Essence of Being a Muse, Volume 1, being put out by Yen Press. This drama, Slice of Life, is written by Aya Fumino. The day I was rejected from art school, everything that was special about me died. That's why I have no choice. Since I'm back to being ordinary, I'll go to the job my mom decided on while wearing clothing my mom picked for me so that I can find what my mom calls happiness, alongside somebody my mom can boast about. Trapped in a never-ending cycle of what if and too bad all the while. This seinen series has potential and sounds like it's going to be some heavy introspective works while also exploring art and life and all the wonderful things that can happen in it. All the good and all the bad. Pretty interesting. Looking forward to checking this one out. Handyman Saito in Another World, Volume 1. This is being put out by Yen Press. It's an isekai action comedy seinen fantasy series written and drawn by Kazutomo Ichitomo. This, my friends, is one of my most anticipated books of the whole friggin' year. I watched the anime adaptation and I was floored by how much I loved it. I don't even have to read you the description. We follow the character of Handyman Saito as he is isekai into a fantasy world, you have a fantastic cast of characters, a wholesome team that welcomes and embraces Saito into this new stage of his life. This world has warriors, wizards, monsters, demons, and all that fun stuff. And for once in his life, Saito understands what it's like to be needed, as of course, a handyman would know how to open locks and take care of traps and things like that in dungeons. Aside from that silly premise, it is a very heartwarming series about the power and strength of not only love, but friendship. The relationships that form with the main cast of characters as his teammates look forward to having him there and being part of a team. Sometimes it can be a little too episodic with the comedic wackiness that's going on, but when you realize what is actually happening with the main story, you're gonna be hooked, you're gonna love it, and you're gonna want more, so I cannot wait for Yen Press to put out Volume 2 already. Homunculus Omnibus Volume 1. This seinen manga is being put out in omnibus format by Seven Seas, collecting the first two volumes featuring story and art by Hideo Yamamoto. A lot of people were excited when this got announced. This was one of the most anticipated books for a lot of people out there on the internet, and we're finally getting this supernatural drama horror series. We follow the character of Nakoshi Suzumu, age 34, as he is homeless 
less living out of his car. Between spending his days with the homeless and his nights in his vehicle, he has little to his name. When a medical student begins to stalk him, offering to pay Nakoshi a significant sum of cash to undergo a strange surgical procedure, Nakoshi initially refuses. But after his beloved car is towed, he finally agrees to take the offer and subjects himself to the operating table. What, if anything, will Nakoshi see differently once he awakens? I'm not gonna reveal the twist because it's pretty cool, but this is a fantastic series with really wonderful, gritty, just greatly detailed artwork that I highly recommend just on that merit alone. It's an awesome series with great visuals while also giving you the spooks with some great horror content. We got a Jose book this month, and it is River's Edge, being put out by Vertical slash Kodansha. This drama slice of life series is by the creator of Helter Skelter and Pink. That would be Kyoko Okazaki. Six high school friends' tangled relationship becomes increasingly tighter when they discover an unknown corpse near the river. This sounds dramatic, intense, and I love me a good Jose book. I can't wait to check this one out. I don't know too much about it aside from the premise, gotta keep it real with you, but nonetheless, super excited. Goodbye, Eddie, from Tatsuki Fujimoto. This is being published by Viz Media, and this made me love Fujimoto as a creator. Yes, I had already read some of his stuff, but this brought it to another level. And yes, Look Back was also great, but I kind of enjoy this one more. This is a new story about coping with loss. Yuta's movie-making career started with a request from his mother to record her final moments. After her death, Yuta meets a mysterious girl named Eddie who takes his life in new directions. The two begin creating a movie together, but Eddie is harboring an explosive secret. Cannot recommend this enough, a fantastic drama that just simultaneously examines grief and the joy of living as well as following your passions and creating art and the beauty of cinema at the same time. It's that great. Sometimes I find wacky premises that I have to recommend and we are on that part of the video. Here is Centaurs, Volume 1, being published by Ablaze Comics. This action, fantasy, historical, uh, quote-unquote, manga is written and drawn by Ryo Sumiyoshi, an epic fantasy adventure set in an alternate medieval Japan where humans coexist with the mythic half-man, half-horse beast known as centaurs, or Jinba. The centaur race were long revered as deities in ancient times. However, with the advent of the Sengoku period, humans started to enslave and use them for military purposes due to their speed, stamina, and ability to communicate in human language. Centaur Centaurs living in the plains were rapidly subjugated. In contrast, large numbers of centaurs living deep in the mountains were still free due to their relative isolation. A wild and proud samurai Jinba from the mountains named Matsukaze, known as the red-headed rock tiger, is caught while protecting his son. He is traded to a feudal lord and taken to his land. There he meets another. That sounds awesome and wacky enough that I gotta talk about it on this video. Like I said, I like the art and I am so happy to see Ablaze just taking chances and licensing stuff that's out there and trying to get a little bit of everything for everybody, you know? So yeah, if you're interested in this, do support it and send out that message that you want companies to license other things that aren't like your super mega hits. Because at the end of the day, all these books, I think, do deserve homes outside of Japan. We're gonna close out this video with Glacier Bay Books and their drama slice of life series, Mothers. This is by Kusahara Umi. Kusahara Umi's works possess a light touch and lyrical sensibility, even while tackling heavy thematic material. Mothers collects 12 heartfelt stories exploring the emotionally fraught nature of human relations and the process both of giving and of receiving love. Candidly and with great warmth, Umi depicts the multitudinous effects of loss, the poetic form of vulnerability and urgency of coping with incapacitation. Mothers is a tender and carefully observed reflection on the various constellations of love and family which shape our lives. 
Now that's a description. This indie slice of life series I'm sure will be super emotional with wonderful art and Glacier Bay Books continues to put out surprising emotional reads and I do recommend them. If you want something out of the norm that won't just satisfy that itch for like action or romance and you want something a little bit deeper with more meaning and feeling consider getting a collection like this i love to highlight companies like ablaze and glacier bay books that go out of the way to put out stuff like this so yeah give it a shot you might be surprised you may end up actually loving this book so there you go. That was a long one. Thank you for tuning in. That is my top 12 anticipated manga releases for the month of June. Again, these are just my picks. Obviously, there are hundreds of titles to choose from, and you probably hated every single one that I listed here. That's okay. But that's how I felt when I looked at the list of all the titles that are coming out. I picked those 12 in particular because they all bring something unique to the table, something different. But what about you guys? What books are you looking forward to in the month of June that I did not list here? And if you are picking out something from this list, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you everybody for the likes, for the shares, to the comments, to the subscriptions. You guys are phenomenal. I love every single one of you. That's going to be it for now. Thank you everybody for tuning in. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.